folks, it's Van Jungberg again and today it's a very interesting topic that probably every one of you is interested in. And this is how to increase your pace while playing rhythm guitar and also while playing solo guitar. And um, I think that I can teach that very good because I had the um, moment in my life where a great guitarist, Joshua Stefan, he called me to play in his band. And um, I listened to his stuff. I knew it before, of course, as a gypsy player. But I, of course, then really checked it out and I found out that I couldn't play the paces, actually. It was really, like, impossible. There were some tunes like Rondo a la Turca and uh, Sweet Georgia Brown, China Boy, and I was really, like, couldn't do it. And so, on the phone, he told me that he would be there in three weeks. So I got to do it in three weeks. And I didn't really totally manage, but I managed to a point that he said, like, okay, I, I'm sure you will get it in the next weeks then so that we can start concerts. And it was obvious that I had to bring it on stage because a good lead player or a good whatever soloist will not, of course, um, play slower because of his rhythm section. So I had this problem and I want to teach you now and give you some advices how I managed to, to get there. Because um, the, maybe the highest paces that I played till that time were like 260 BPM. And then I had to be able to play paces till 350 BPM. This is really the highest. Usually it's not that fast, but close to it. And a lot of paces that Joshua plays when he plays very fast up tempo, it was like, or that also Stoffelow plays with Nusche when they really go up. It's beyond 300 BPM. And that's what you gotta learn, and what you want to learn when you're a rhythm player. So, um, as an example, I will demonstrate that with the chord changes of Joseph Joseph because it's only like a few chords. You can take the A minor 6 chord. If you don't know all these chord voicings, I um, suggest you to <clears throat> start with a different topic because this video is better if you already uh, are into gypsy jazz and know the voicing. So Joseph Joseph, in case you don't know, it's like A minor. I will play it slow in the beginning and then we will. Um, I will demonstrate the form and then we will start with the lesson. It's like that. One, two, one, two, three, four. Now we go to E dominant seven. think I would say it's like 250 or something like that probably or 260 beat p.m. and this is already pretty fast so if you have problems with it here's the first advice it is much harder <clears throat> to uh, mute every note what I mean is sometimes gypsy players play like that means every stroke is muted When you do that at a very high pace, for example, like one, two, one, two, three, four, then it's very difficult because you gotta mute every single time, you gotta push down your fingers and release it. What's much more simpler, and this is the first trick, is playing every one long. Every one and three, sorry. One, two, one, two, three, four. like this. More E dominant 7. Stuff like that, you know? So by leaving the first stroke longer, you gain some time and ex especially your right hand will profit from that trick. Because uh, then you're not like pumping Qu uh, quarter notes all the time and this is a very this is very important and that helped me a lot you can even um, play it with a smaller movement then 
You know, because when you play a swing rhythm in a medium pace or a medium up pace, you would probably go and really do a long way with the hand in, uh, in order to achieve a good sound, like... <laughs> The higher the pace gets, of course, it's uh, more difficult to do that strong and wide movement, and you you get to a movement that is a bit uh, tinier, you know. And so when I do the long stroke, I could I will now demonstrate it very extreme. I would probably do very soft. covering the strings and not going like that anymore and these two tricks are very uh, are very essential I think then another trick is about stamina so stamina is really like uh, to me this was one of the most challenging things because I was really like in the beginning I was really um, <laughs> I feared that numbers in concerts I had fear and I was really like you know <sighs> and uh, so especially when there was another soloist when the Joshua Stefan Trio had like say, let's say guests and then you know I, I, I once played with Stochelow or with Kostel Nitescu or also with very good German players like um, like uh, like uh, Sebastian Reimann the violin player or Sandro Roy fantastic Sinto violin player and so and now when you got two solos and no breaks then you have to play like with the melody in the beginning and in the end you sometimes you have to play like seven minutes of that pace so and then you need little rests and that little rests can be little accents. For example, at a slow pace, that would be like this. One, two, like this. And this accent on two and just letting ring for a fairly short moment sounds funny, but it gives you really the possibility to um, to rehab, you know, for a very short time. It's very effective. At a higher pace, it will be like this. One, two, one, two, three. Should not be um, should not be there for your own comfort. Of course, the the, the accompaniment of the soloist should uh, follow the intense intention of his solo. But this is now, let's say, musical real talk. I mean, when you're a professional musician and you play concerts for money, uh, there are some situations you don't always follow that ideal, and that was one of those situations, I guess. And I don't think it's just me. I guess every rhythm player. Who plays in the solo extraordinarily long at a high pace you know they can do it but if you look in their faces even Nusche and Hono Winterstein who are extraordinarily good at it they are like um, more comfortable when they play Jacques André of course than when playing China Boy or Old Man River I think that's just fact you know they can do it easily they feel good when they play it I feel good too when I play it with a good bass player and when it's really groovy you know it, but it depends from show to show it's different sometimes you know um, you're not in a good condition or something and then it can be more challenging than at other days or sometimes you like have a bit of a fight with the bass player only a bit not really that the audience really notices it, but it's for your own feeling it's important so these were like tricks that I recommend of course and now the next trick about stamina is that when you start playing fast it is very important um, that you just do it. So set the metronome on a pace that's challenging for you. Let's say where you can't do more than two choruses. And what you do then is playing it all the time. You know, for like Joseph Joseph and let's say your pace would be one, two, one, two, three. Well, this is not very fast actually, but it's already up tempo. And whenever you feel like you get, you know, challenged,
was getting faster now it's like because i have this speed from the beginning in mind and then it i'm just i'm putting it on but this is like um how you can really do it and how you can go through it like practicing stamina and this is also true for soloing let's say when you're solo in a in a pace like that the first thing that you should be able to perform is at least on one note <laughs> eight notes you know and I think in the beginning there are some examples that you can watch on my channel because I practiced that basically within the last four years before that I was not really a fast player and I did play gypsy swing but uh, I did do also I did also a lot of different stuff and I did a lot of finger picking stuff and I was not so focused on playing fast so since I'm playing with Joshua because he's such a extra extraordinary great picking monster you know I'm concentrating more on my picking technique and it's really like uh, when you get there you start with licks you know this is not really lyrical improvisation in the beginning you just gotta get through it and in order to uh, you know to yeah to reach your goals you know and some players say that for example playing fast or some people say that you know most professional players don't, but some people say that, that playing fast is not important, you know, on, and that it's, you know, all about the lyrical side of music. And of course, the lyrical, the lyrical side of music is so nice and very essential to all the styles when you play. And it should be, of course, about feeling and about, you know, what you really want to make the audience feel. But in the real, let's say, musician's world, technique is really required. I mean, there are styles that demand a certain speed or a certain you know or a certain aggression in your picking technique i mean you can't play gypsy swing when you can't do it because when the band is going like okay let's play this tune then you should go like like it is like it is um, I, I hope you know what I mean it, you, you, you just have to be able to do it otherwise you can't play the song so and um, there are a lot of musical directions where this is true not only gypsy jazz but also swing and all the great players even if playing fast is not their um, idiom let's say like Herb Ellis or Barney Kessel they they can do it you know there are videos on the net where, where they play really fast rhythm changes up to 320 300 30 BPM and they performing very well you know you can maybe see that it's not their most important that that's not their real primary focus on music but they do it very well and they really um, get along pretty well you know almost every great player can do that and even those who don't I think of guys like for example Bill, Frize Bill Frizel which I admire really his new album this duo album with the bass player um, old town, something like that. It's, it's or a small town. I don't know. It's 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 really it's amazing. I like all his stuff, all his country stuff. And he's really a guy who's never really playing fast, but uh, he can think fast. And you can write down in my comments if you know which recording I mean. I listened to a recording with guys when we were studying. From him, it was a duo version, Chick Corea and um, Bill Frizzell, and they played Spain. <laughs> it was really amazing, and they played Ole or something like that. And it was amazing to hear because Bill Frizzell, without playing fast, he managed to play fast actually. But that's only possible if you can think that fast, and therefore you got to play. It. You you have to play these paces a lot, and I think he did because in the world of professional jazz musicians, he made his way when he was younger, and even without playing very let's say muscular lines or something, he really ended up a professional player. So when you play lines, and th this is like. Um, I can I think for me this was also always a struggle the first thing that you got to check out is the way you hold your pick when you're not into gypsy jazz and you flat pick then of course for gypsy jazz that will never sound really authentic you can do it but uh, the guitar has no um, real resonance then and no real reverb and so I um, recommend a floating technique where the pick is really where you're not touching this the, the, the bridge here and when I do it, my finger is, what's, this is not really a gypsy technique, but my finger is always like touching 
the body here a bit. But it's very important that you manage to pay st play steady eight notes and you can try to increase with the right angle of the wrist the pace of just playing eight notes. And this is much more effective than trying to speed up with the metronome uh, without changing your technique or something. That can be very frustrating. I did that for years when I was studying and never really set goal, you know. <coughs> and one of the licks that you probably know and that you can practice is this chromatic jangle lick when you that one. And so you start on the D string and you can do that with all strings and try to play that because when you start on the D strings playing triplets or sixteenth note depends on where are you where you are in the bar, it ends up on <coughs> a high E. So it can be used for lots of chords like C G, A minor, E, whatever, all chords that are somehow in the region. And this is a very good lick to practice it. And I recommend practicing some licks, you know, and just repeating them over and over again until you, you know, get it. And it is very um, useful to have licks in the beginning that have two or four notes on one string. So you avoid the gypsy double down in the beginning, that is very difficult, and you avoid some kind of sweeping techniques or something, you know, so just regular <coughs> alternate picking. That's what I recommend at least. So, and this is like, you know, I mean, you got to do it yourself. There is no th such thing like a, like a trick. Some videos want to tell you that there are tricks and shortcuts, but actually you got to, there are some things like the angle of the wrist is important. Maybe if you can't manage to play fast at all, you got to change something here. And even if it feels weird in the beginning, it's worth trying it. You know, for example, a quick checkup could be uh, how is your wrist when playing tremolo? And then you should try to play two kinds of tremolo. Flat picking with a wrist on the bridge and with a floating wrist. And the way you perform the tremolo, that might be the way where you're of holding the right hand where fast playing is possible. And another great exercise that I did <coughs> was um, when you um, play, you know, this chromatic exercise, you try to um, to get both hands in the same speed. And I did that like this. Um, for example, you know, start on a higher string because it's easier. And then you do like legato. And now when you do it faster, gets more challenging and it brings your hands together like like so like this you know and this will you know keep your hands in yeah sync in sync you know and you can start with that exercise because it's a good exercise because all the it's 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 always like four notes on a string so you can rush through the strings and then when you when you achieve it somehow, it feels very good, but you have to um, train hard. And same as with the rhythm guitar, to my mind, it is very important to, um, to do it also with this stamina exercise. You know, take one of the play-alongs, one of my play-alongs. Dennis Chang's play-alongs are so good, I highly recommend them. Good paces. And just set a, set a, set a play-along on the pace that you like, uh, um, or uh, pick a, pick a play-along with a pace which is high for you and just try to fight your way through it, you know, don't, yeah, yeah, don't give up, just do it, you know, from the beginning to the end, just keep playing and then while doing this very often, it's, it's really, it's, it, it's tough for the hands and tough, so don't uh, make sure that you won't get any wrist pain or something, but really try to practice with stamina and fight through it because only doing this every day, it is also a very important part of progressing. It's not only, it cannot only be done with just some tricks, how to hold your hand and sing. This is a nice idea, but to my mind and my experience as a musician, and I'm a professional musician now for 15 years, and I, I was not very talented for technique, I had to fight my way for, for it, and it's really like also doing the stamina thing. This is at least the last thing that I can say. 
This is a very difficult uh, topic because there is no real shortcut or secret trick. But uh, I want to assure you that if you do it daily, this is also very important. Not having breaks, but you, no day off. You know, do it like every day. Not five days, not one day off. Do it every day. Try to do it whenever you can. It doesn't take long. Like if you do it half an hour a day, focusing on that speed thing, it's, this is a lot, you know, and it, you will progress, you know, but uh, don't think that speed is not important. It is, it is. It's not the only thing, but I don't know so many real ex ex uh, exciting players and great players that are not able to do that, you know, no matter if we're talking about also non-gypsy jazz players like Gilad Hexelmann or Julian Lage, they can play very, very fast, very fast guitar players if they have to. And um, it, it has also to do with timing and being tight and uh, knowing a lot about speeds and uh, paces, stuff like that. So I hope that kind of helped you and I want to motivate you to keep doing it. It helped me a lot. You can watch my performances on YouTube where I'm showing my progress as well somehow. And it helped me a lot doing that for the last four years and I really increased my uh, speed picking abilities a lot and I still am and so uh, don't be afraid and do not think that you're not the fast player I think everybody can get it maybe not to a level like John Petrucci, Joshua Stefan or whatever light the speed of light picker but I think you will get there to the point of professional finger picking uh, plectrum picking and technique I wish you a nice day see you bye <laughs>